What's up guys, welcome back to another simplified astrophysics video. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Doppler effect for sound and light. This video will be great whether you're just cramming for tomorrow's test or you're just another physics enthusiast. Let's run the intro. Alright, so the Doppler effect was discovered in 1842 by Austrian physicist Christian Doppler and it applies to waves. Now the most common application of the Doppler effect is with sound waves. Before we look at the Doppler effect, we need to look at the wavefront model, which is commonly used to represent sound waves. Here's a representation of the wavefront model. In the center, I have my sound source, right at that dot. These concentric circles outside the dot are the sound waves and the distance between each circle is a wavelength. I know this looks nothing like a wave per se, but understand that real sound waves are complex to draw and this is just a model to represent them. We can understand the wavefront model better with a more wave looking type model of it. This model is analogous to the concentric circle model, but I've replaced the circles with your traditional sine waves. The circular wavefront model is much easier to deal with, so we're going to go back to that one. Now you're probably just like, okay, sound waves come out in concentric circles and the distance between each circle is a wavelength? So what? I already knew that. I already saw that creepy sound wave episode of the Magic School Bus. Well, there's something special that happens with these waves, and it has to do with relative motion. That is, if either the sound source or the listener of sound is moving. Let's take a look at this. So here's my sound source emitting its sound waves represented by those concentric circles. And here's that grand listener of sound, which is actually a very prestigious job title by the way. If there is some relative motion between these two, if either the sound source or the listener begins moving, then we're going to perceive some effects in the sound waves. What are those effects? Well, that's a good question. Those effects are effects on frequency and wavelength. Now one thing I need you to remember about these two is that frequency and wavelength have an inverse relationship. As frequency increases, wavelength decreases. As frequency decreases, wavelength increases. So let's go back to that relative motion thing and take a look at the effects on frequency and wavelength. If there is relative motion in which the source and the ground listener of sound move towards each other, then the wavelength of the sound decreases, and by that inverse relationship, the frequency increases. So if an emergency vehicle with a siren moves towards you, then the sound waves of that siren will have a perceived decreased wavelength and increased frequency. And for sound, higher frequency means higher pitch. So you'll hear the sirens ringing at that moment as a sound with higher pitch. In the other case, if there's relative motion in which the sound source and the grand listener move away from each other, then the wavelength of the waves increase, and once again, by that inverse relationship, the frequency decreases. So if you're moving away from an emergency vehicle with a siren, the sound waves will have a perceived increased wavelength and decreased frequency, which yields a lower pitch sound. So that's the Doppler effect for sound. Recapping relative motion towards the sound equals a smaller wavelength, higher frequency, and thus a higher pitch sound. And relative motion away from the sound equals a larger wavelength, lower frequency, and thus a lower pitch sound. Now you've probably seen a lot of the Doppler effect for sound in your lifetime, passing by cop cars, fire trucks, and ambulances. But there's another part of the Doppler effect that you probably haven't seen as much of, and that's the Doppler effect for light. Alright, now first of all, how can light have a Doppler effect? Well, we know that the Doppler effect applies to waves, and we know from the principle of wave-particle duality that light can sometimes be a wave. The Doppler effect for light plays out in the exact same way that the Doppler effect for sound does. It's caused by relative motion. Most everything in our universe emits light. Stars, galaxies, nebulae, planets, books, dogs, humans, cats, etc. Now when that light is emitted in a sense that there's relative motion between it and the grand observer, well that's when the Doppler effect for light comes in. So let's say I'm over here with my telescope and I'm observing and I see a galaxy. Now let's say that ha that galaxy has some relative motion to me and it's moving away from me. Well if it's moving away from me, then its light waves, per the Doppler effect, will exhibit a perceived increase in wavelength and decrease in frequency. Now wait a second. What happens when visible light waves change frequency and wavelength? They change color. 
If this light wave that undergoes the Doppler effect originally had a wavelength of 400 nanometers, a bluish violetish color, and that wavelength increases to 700 nanometers, that's a reddish color, well then it changed colors and exhibited something we like to call a redshift. And redshifts are key to determining what is moving away from us. And redshifts were used in determining the expansion of the universe. Now let's take a look at the other side of things. Let's say I'm observing some mysterious celestial object and it also has relative motion, but this bad guy is moving towards me. All right, it moves towards me. The Doppler effect says that relative motion towards an observer decreases wavelength and increases frequency. Once again, changing that color of any visible light emitted. So if I had 570 nanometer yellowish light that shifted to about 400 to 450 nanometer bluish light, then I just saw something called a blue shift, which is when an object is moving towards you. Red shifts and blue shifts are really useful to astronomers in all their work and calculations to determine which objects are moving towards us and away from us. Now let's do a quick recap of the Doppler effect for light. An object moving away from us at a high speed will have its light waves increase in wavelength and decrease in frequency, corresponding to a shift towards the red end of the visible spectrum, a red shift. An object moving towards us at a high speed will have its light waves decrease in wavelength and increase in frequency, corresponding to a shift towards the blue end of the visible spectrum, a blue shift. So that's the Doppler effect, folks. Hopefully you have a better understanding of it now. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next week or two.